Evan with I Can Do It Yourself here with a vlog episode on anything and everything you want to know about your Kenmore Elite dishwasher and how to repair all the problems. Uh, I've had problems with this thing the last couple days and I've basically taken it all apart and put it back together. So I'm going to tell you how to clean it to get rid of the funky stink problem, uh, how to turn it on if it doesn't turn on, how to get it to drain if it doesn't drain. Anyway, start watching. Okay, so here's the dishwasher. It's a Kenmore Elite brand. And this Kenmore Elite is very similar to most other Kenmores. And in fact, there's really no difference between this and other ones. Uh, so even though your innards may look a little bit different than mine, the, the repair process and everything you're gonna do in this video would, would be exactly the same. In fact, it'd probably work for almost all dishwashers. So here's one of the problems. The last few days, this thing has stunk. And I mean really stunk. It smells like wet, dirty dog. And I've put cleaning pack of these little packets of cleaning stuff in there. It doesn't really do anything. It looks like it has lime and scale all over it. Um, and so here's the here's the baskets that come out. And so it's got like this lime and scale stuff all over the thing. And it just stinks. So even after I do a load, it stinks. So what's the repair for that? So you could do a bunch of rinses and a bunch of rinses. And I've tried doing that. But basically what you're going to have to do is start taking stuff apart and cleaning each item independently. So the first thing to do is take the baskets out and also take the top basket out and these sliders are just harbors of bacteria in here and it surprises me how things just don't get really clean so they have these little clips that come onto the sides here so you unclip this and you pull the basket out but these sides had had just buildup of calcium and bacteria and all kinds of stuff all the way down through and then the inside of it and on both sides and you're just going to have to get in there with a sponge and clean it by hand and pull it out or use something like this, which is a, um, a steam cleaner, and I've been using the steam cleaner. And also make sure you get along these edges here, and there's all kinds of gunk and junk that stays in there, and it really likes to pull in these edge corners down here. And as you can see, this is some of the stuff that comes off. After I've cleaned it a few times and I'm still running cycles, there's still stuff that comes out. I don't want that on my dishes. I mean, that's bacteria and things like that. I don't want that. So what I've done is I've pulled the filter out to clean it, I've pulled the tray out, and I've been putting wash cycles and then I'm letting it, uh, um, I do a drain and let it suck it out and then keep doing that until I don't see any more of this stuff. And that's the, really the determinations. I do not want to see any more bacteria pieces or anything like that. And when I open this thing up, I don't want it to smell like a dirty wet dog, right? So uh, keep cleaning until it does that. And in fact, I'm just about to the point where I'm going to pull this thing out take it outside and get the power washer and power wash the ever living whatever out of this thing to get these little pieces. Because see, even if I can zoom in here, there's still some scaly buildup in here. And that's, that's not just calcium. Some of that is bacteria and things. And that'll get all over your dishes and that's not good to have. All right, so some of the other problems you have. If your dishwasher does not drain or turn on, uh, one of the things to check, or doesn't fill up with water but turns on, is this thing called the floater. You need this piece. This piece, now another one, clean all around here because there's bacteria and things that sit in here because no water gets around here to clean it. It just basically sits water on it all the time. And what this thing does is it pushes down in the bottom of the unit uh, with this little piece here, and as it fills up with water, it turns the switch on and off, and you can hear it. That's the switch turning on and off. So as the water level comes up to a certain level, it says, okay, I don't need to fill it anymore. So if, you're, if your washing machine is not filling up with water, that would be the thing to check, otherwise the valve at the bottom. But you should be able to still hear the valve going on, but then there's no water coming in, okay? So the next thing to bit is you can take all of this apart, and I've done that to clean in the inside. I've already done that. And what you need to do that with is a nice little Torx, and this is a Torx 15. All right, so all you do is you unscrew this in three or four places and you can pull this whole unit out. It clips on to the sides over here and the top over here because there's bacteria and buildup all in the back sides of it and underneath in here. And you need to get all that out and make sure that there's no food particles or anything besides that. All right, and the other bit to really, really check is these corner edges. These really had a lot of buildup and junk in it. And the thing is, once you start cleaning this thing, stuff will just start coming apart like that. See all of this in here. And you wanna make sure to get that all out. All right, so last item. What if your buttons don't turn on? Okay, this has happened to me earlier today where the buttons don't turn on and there's no lights or anything on the unit 
and there's power coming to the unit, but it doesn't turn on. So there's one fuse that is inside the entire dishwasher. There's just one fuse, and you get it through the control panel up in here. And what you have to do is you take your torque wrench again, and you unscrew right here, and you take this whole metal door piece off. There's a control panel in here, and there's a little fuse. It's a circular piece about yay big, and there's two black wires coming to it. It's a heat sensor, so if it gets too hot, it turns power off. And you could test that with, say, like a voltmeter if you happen to have a voltmeter. Um, otherwise, if you, it, if you don't want to replace it, because they're really cheap to replace, but like me, uh, you know, you're doing this project and you don't want to have to run to the store and back and forth if you don't know if that's your problem, um, you can just take those wires, strip them out, and then just uh, put them together and uh, put a nut on it so that way you just get rid of the fuse and no big deal then you could see if it runs or not right so anyway so that's basically all of the real issues with uh, with the Kenmore elites and all of them the the typical things that happens with them either water doesn't come in power doesn't turn on or it stinks so I hope this helps you and we're almost done with this so I can get back to washing dishes because man the kitchen stinks because I've got dishes in the sink Anyway, if you liked the video, um, subscribe and give me some likes and comments, and we'll make regular videos of how to do it and product reviews. Thanks.